Hello, welcome to you all. Welcome to my channel, my channel, and your concert. Today, I am going to discuss about design procedure of quarter joint. This is the simplified basic diagram of the quarter joint in which we have uh, three basic components one is the socket, another one is the spiral, and one major component is quarter. This quarter is quarter joint is used to pull the one end of the section from the other end or plant tensile force P. Here I am using capital P is the tensile force on the rod, a small, a small d is the dia of the rod from both the end. D1 is the outer dia of the socket, D2 is the inner dia of the spoil rod. D3 is the spoil rod collar dia, this is the collar end of the spoil rod which is used to support the socket and spoil rod with the help of collar. D4 is the dia of the socket collar, the socket collar dia. This A is the distance from end of the slot to the end of the spoil rod. A is the distance, this A is the distance from end of the slot, this is the end of the slot to the end of the spoil rod. This distance. B is the width of the mean width of the quarter because this quarter is the tapered kind of section. So we take for design simplification a small b as a mean mean width. C is the this C is the axial distance to end of the socket collar this t is the thickness of the quarter t1 is the thickness of spoil rod collar this is the spoil rod collar thickness and l is the length of the collar this is the length of the collar l so to design a quarter joint we need to consider a failure of the e section to design a component so first we need to design a rod for design simplification so rod can be failed due to tensile force. This is the rod section. If we apply tensile force P, then rod has a small d diameter. The rod will fail from this section. So the resisting area will be small d uh, circular section. So the area will be 5 to d square. As we know that stress is equal to load upon area. So so here is a tensile stress will occur. So sigma d is equal to load P divided by resisting area 5 to d square. This a. So from equation above equation A we can calculate rod diameter is small d because in the metro from most sigma d and load will be given to us. On the basis of that we can calculate diameter d. Further we can design a socket, small rod or a quarter. Any one of them we can design. So first I considering here by small rod and so to design a spoil rod, we need to consider a failure of a spoil rod. First, I am going to consider a tensile failure of a spoil rod. This is the spoil rod section, 3D representation of a spoil rod, in which this section is the collar of a spoil rod. This is the slot of the collar, the slot of the spoil rod, in which the quarter will fit it. Thickness D and width B will be the slot cross section area. If we apply tensile force on a, this so, uh, spoil rod, the component will fail and the resting area will be something like this. This mid section has a slotted, slot, slotted area in which quarter will fit it. The circular section of a spoil rod is small d2, so the resting area will be pi by 4 d2 square because here in the mid section, the slot. Uh, is there in which no material is there so the resting area will be pi by 4 d2 square minus d2 into d because d is the thickness of slot and d2 is the height of that so, uh, spoil rod section so the resting area will be this and uh, as we know that due to tensile field, tensile stress will occur so stress will be load upon area so from basic concept stress of when we load up on it, we can skip this is equation A docker. Equation B is there. So from the equation B we can calculate D2. So to calculate D2, we need to calculate D. Because as we see here, sigma T and P will be known to us from above and 
there are two problems and basically there are two problems or cases really problems but t2 and t two unknowns are there one equation is there so to calculate two unknown one one of more one more equation will be required so those this uh, little problems application we consider empirical relation here i am considering empirical relation t is equal to 0.3 times of t from this equation we can calculate t because t is already calculated with the failure of cross section and tension so t can be calculated and t can be put it here so our equation b we can calculate t other swarbat will fail not only due to tensile but also due to shear compression so how can the how we how we can say that the shear will occur suppose you assume that in a swarbat section in this slot the quarter will fit it if you pull this saw swarbat the quarter will shear the swarbat section something like this this kind of a shear will occur this is the resisting area how much shear will occur this quarter will move from this end to this swarbat end after that the section has a socket so quarter can travel from this end to this this is the distance a and how much the height of the quarter is what the height of the swarbat is d2 so the resisting area will be a into d2 because here double shear will occur one of them is in this phase and another will be back on this phase so the resisting area will be a into d2 into a uh, 2 into d2 into a so here as we know that stress is equal to load upon v here the stress is shear stress and here i am giving shear stress over tau load is p and we know that resisting area will be 2 d2 into a why 2 d2 into a because double shear and d2 into a will be a is the distance traveled by quarter in a square got and d2 is the height of the section of a square got so from above equation we can calculate which above equation c we can calculate a because d2 is already calculated with the help of equation b next the failure due to crushing in a square got the crushing will also occur in a square got section while this red hatch is area is the crushed area suppose assume that this in this dotted section one quarter is fitted if we pull this quarter the quarter will crush this front section this circular section how much area this rectangular area this is the rectangular area height of the quarter will be in as per what is d2 because height of the square got is d2 and slotted area of a quarter is p so this is the resting area the tangent section so how much will be the resting area d2 into p this is the rectangular tangent section so the tangent section area is d2 into t height into width so area is d2 into t so as we know that stress is equal to load upon area here the stress is crushing the stress crushing stress is equal to load p divided by 2 into t so from above equation we can check that sigma c for square bond further <coughs> one of one more component is there in a square bond section one is the collar square bond collar so to calculate square bond collar failure we need to consider shearing failure of a square bond the component if we apply tensile force this collar will shear out in this spoil bond so how much that will be resting area this circumference pi into d2 d2 is the circular section of the spoil bond and circumferential failure will occur if pi into d2 into t1 thickness t1 is the thickness of this collar spoil bond collar as i mentioned earlier and as i Changes from the cases somewhat of the cross-section. So the spoil bond collar will fail, and the resting area will be pi into d2 into t because resting area will be 
d thickness d1 thickness and circumference by into d2 so as we say that any seen here shear will occur in the smaller collar so that the stress is equal to tau to load upon area a area phi into d2 into d3 equation d will take this so from the other equation e we can calculate d1 next is the design of a socket the socket can fail to tension tensile failure will occur in the this uh, socket section so socket section has a two diameter one is outer diameter d1 and another one will be d2 diameter which is hollow why hollow because in a socket d2 diameter of d2 dimension of solid section of a spalvert will fit it to lock the rod to apply tensile force so if we say that tensile failure is occurring in a socket so the resting area will be something like this which can be seen from this here so the this is the socket slot end which has capacity at height d2 solid if we consider a section then resting area will be a is equal to pi by 4 d1 square minus d2 square d1 is the larger diameter of the socket d2 is the hollow section of the diameter of the socket d1 square minus d2 square minus d1 minus d2 into t why minus d1 minus d2 into t because that in this mid section no material is there and the inner thickness t so d1 minus t d1 minus d will be the area and t is the height thickness of the section in which no material is there so the socket tensile area will be occurring in a resting area a is equal to pi over d1 square minus d2 square minus d1 minus d2 into t so due to tensile failure load upon area area will be this so from the equation f we can calculate d further failure of a socket and in a shearing how the shear will occur same as as we seen here in a spoil one but the cross section will be different because socket has a mid section hollow to fit it a spoil one outer dia of a socket is d4 this section In this section, shear will occur. The shear failure will occur because if we apply tensile force, the cotter will shear and move from here to here. So the shear will occur in this section. If we apply tensile force, if we pull this end, the cotter will move from here to here because this socket will move from right to left and cotter will move left to right. So shear will occur in this end. This uh, socket end, so the diameter of the socket is here is d4, and hollow section is d2, and the distance travelled by quarter in a socket is c. This this distance will travel by quarter. So the resting area will be d4 minus d2 into c. The travel section because in this Mid section no material is there d4 minus d2 into c there is a double shear occur in this section so we can calculate area 2 into d4 minus d2 into c so we can say that shear stress tau is equal to load upon area area will be 2 into d4 minus d2 into c to calculate d4 or c because here two unknowns are there we need to calculate we need to consider a vector relation. We can uh, we can consider d4 is equal to 0.2 times of d, or c is equal to 0.7 times of 0.75 times of d. One of them, one of the empirical relation we can consider to calculate another unknown. Okay. So from the equation we can calculate d4 or c to take after taking one of the Empirical relation from the above equation. 
after considering shearing failure due to crushing can also occur in a crushing or it also occur in a socket section this is the crushing will crushing crush section similar as as similar as uh, in a scalpel section failure so crushing will occur in this slotted area because the quarter will crush the quarter section quarter will fail the socket section so area is equal to t4 minus t2 into t because t4 is the outer dia of the socket and t2 is the hollow section of the um, small one t is a slot thickness quarter quarter thickness quarter will crush the socket end so the crushing of sigma c is equal to load upon area load is b area will be d4 minus d2 into t so in every equation we can check sigma c last is the failure of a quarter in a shearing due to shearing so we can say that the quarter will shear due to the shearing now consider this initial diagram if we apply tensile force one of the end one of the two ends are connected with the socket and this mid end is connected was connected with the spot one if you apply tensile force and consider the shear uh, failure will occur the one of the failure is shearing failure from here another shear failure will occur from here like this one of the mid end is connected with the spot this spot one and Two of them are connected with the socket. If we apply, if we apply the side force, means the failure will occur in quarter. The shear will occur here and here. This side. So double shear will occur. How much double shear? What is the resisting area? B is the thick, uh, width of the quarter and T is the thickness of the quarter. So failure will occur in the quarter section. So the resisting area will be two into B into T. Due to shearing failure, tau is equal to load upon area A is equal to two into T. From the above equation, we can calculate width of T. So this is the basic design procedure of a quarter joint. With the help of that, we can design a quarter joint and calculate different uh, notation or different dimensions of the quarter joint. I hope you understand the basic concept related to quarter joint. In further upcoming videos, I am going to discuss about cases case study of a quarter joint and knuckle joint and different types of uh, sections uh, if you have any doubt then please uh, tell me below this video in comment box and don't forget to subscribe my channel and please press the bell icon adjacent to subscription button to get further notification related to my channel thank you